Okay, cool. All right, there we go. Look at that. I'm wearing the same shirt as I was <laughs> on the <this> slide. <laughs> All right, well, good morning, everybody. My name is Keith Flynn. I'm the Director of Digital Marketing here at West USA. Excited to have you guys here for um, this webinar. Uh, as you guys probably know, we're talking about shooting uh, photography and video with your smartphone. Just some really cool uh, tips and suggestions, uh, tricks and ideas for you. We're gonna start off on photos, uh, um, you know, just acclimating yourself with uh, te techniques. Probably a lot of stuff you guys already know, but just kind of putting it together in that mind frame and then having all this at your disposal to go back and review. Um, and then we'll get in the video as well. And uh, as we always do with all of our webinars, we are recording them and they are on our YouTube channel for you guys to look back at a later date if you have to hop off, take a phone call. Um, by all means, life happens, and I understand. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, jump into the chat box down there, guys, and um, or unmic yourself or unmute yourself and uh, holler out loud. Let me know what you're uh, what you're thinking. What I can recap for you. Um, hopefully, there's a lot of good stuff for you here, guys. And I know I know that uh, um, with us being cost conscious as independent contractors, as agents, we want to do our best to obviously keep costs down. Um, sometimes, you know, cameramen aren't always accessible, uh, cost is an issue, um, but you guys are fully capable of doing some really cool stuff with your phone. So we'll get rock and rolling. Um, first and foremost, like we always do, we like to say thank you to our sponsors, and we always uh, have the privilege of having our sponsors jump on with us for the morning. Amy, I don't know why your particular headshot didn't take on this one. <laughs> I was going to put you on. Um, but um, uh, we do have Amy Landway from Fairway Mortgage, uh, the Justin Frederick team. And so good morning, Amy. How are you? Good morning. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm not going to take a lot of your time. Like he said, my name is Amy Landway. I am the marketing coordinator for the Frederick team at Fairway Mortgage. Uh, it's never our intention to try to steal away business, but if you have a few extra minutes and want to get together and hear what the Frederick team has to offer and how we are um, set apart from other lenders, I would love to meet with you. We've got a lot of tools to help your business, and I'm here to assist you guys. So reach out to me. I'll put our team information as well as my personal information in the chat box and enjoy class. Hey, thank you so much, Amy. Yeah, definitely um, uh, uh, reach out to Amy if you guys have any questions. I know there's some cool stuff that they do for, uh, you, you guys have a VA program, right? So, yes, yes yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a big emphasis now. It always has been, but obviously- Yeah, it's just for so purchases it's... and refinances. So. Nice, awesome. Yeah, yeah definitely uh, jump out there and reach out to Amy if you have any questions. Amy, thank you so much. I always appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Keith. All right, have a good day. You too. And also to uh, shout out to HCP Property Inspections, Anthony Cucci and the guys over there at uh, their home inspection team are awesome. If you have any questions at all about home inspections, uh, great resource. Um, I know I've got him on speed dial when I have issues because he's always a guy that has a guy. So uh, reach out to Anthony and uh, the team if you have any questions or comments, concerns at all for um for home inspection. All right, cool. So um, just some cool statistics for you guys, just things to keep in mind when, um, why we're doing, um, um, you know, an emphasis on shooting photography, shooting video. Um, you know, again, the point of this webinar today is to talk about how uh, you guys can up your game, uh, whether you're doing it or you have someone helping you out. Just some tips to remind yourself of what uh, is gonna look best for your potential clients. So when they are looking at photo photos, but some stats I thought were very interesting. Homeowners, um, obviously you guys know homeowners who are looking for a home, uh, homes with high quality photography uh, sells 32% faster. You know, there is uh, like everything, you guys understand that first impressions are everything. And uh, a, a picture that says a thousand words. So when you are shooting good photography and you're using that to your advantage, it's definitely gonna help you increase this, the sale of your home and the speed once you do it. A home with one photo spends an average of 70 days on the market. I know it's crazy to think that, but I know when I'm, we were looking at homes and I'll always look for homes. I see it every now and then. Photography, there's one to 10 photos, tops maybe. Um, and I know I've seen sometimes when a listing has photos of what the house originally looked like mix in with the new uh, photos or anything that has been recently remodeled, um, 
So being mindful of that is important because those can um, turn off uh, a potential shopper when they're not sure which one's current, which one they're looking at. 90% of home buyers take to the internet to look at the house before touring. You guys know this one, this is important. So uh, we're all jumping on the internet to review, to look at photos, to look at videos, to educate. Uh, it is a quintessential piece of learning about a particular service or product. And so uh, if you have good photos that are gonna accompany your listing, definitely gonna put your, yourself uh, in a better position. When it comes to video, 45% of people watching uh, uh, watching more video on Facebook and YouTube each week. More than an hour, it's crazy. Um, there, people are unplugging, people are using a lot of streaming services and devices, Facebook Watch, uh, Instagram Live videos to learn about a product or service. And so using um, uh, the power of video is important, especially when you know that 95% of the message is retained through a video as opposed to a static image or just text alone. Now, 87% of people online marketers or 87% of online marketers use video content. You guys are marketers. You guys are marketing uh, your CEOs, your CFOs, your CIOs. You guys are uh, the uh, the uh, wearing many hats when it comes to your business and marketing is a big one there too. Um, your uh, marketing efforts, if you are not there, then no one's going to know you're in business. And so when people are uh, using video as a great tool to get their content out there, it's important. And even if it's just static images and a slideshow or some small animation that you can find on Canva, um, anytime video is registering on a Facebook or a YouTube channel or Instagram, um, engagement goes up and people stop the scroll. And that's important. We want to stop that thumb scroll to get people's attention to see your content. 25 to 34 year olds make up a large expanded demographic of your millennials. As you guys know, those are the largest first time home buyers. Uh, they are watching the most amount of video on, on, on a mobile device, on, in a, on a cell phone, um, on a tablet. And so you guys certainly need to be not only putting out video, but also targeting that audience and speaking to them because as you guys know, they are um, uh, our largest first time home buyer. And, um, the typically millennials who are using Instagram, are watching videos are more affluent, a higher income earner. So definitely a, a demographic to target. A, a qualified buyer is what we all like to hear, right? Uh, over half of video content is viewed on a mobile device, a little over 55, 56%. And that's swinging up as more, more people are have access to the internet and to uh, smartphones. Prices are coming down, a lot of different models on the market. Naturally, more people are consuming content in that respect. Uh, let's let Penny in. All right. 92% um, of video, uh, mobile video views share videos with other people. I share a lot of videos. I know I have friends who share a lot of videos. And so if you or someone you know is looking to purchase a home, um, you know, brother, sister, mother, dog, friend, whoever wants to move into the area and you're seeing a house or a listing video, uh, naturally we're all sharing it from a mobile device. Native video on Facebook. Native video on Facebook, 10 times higher reach uh, compared to YouTube. My head's in the way there. Um, we talk about this one often, and this one comes right from Facebook. Um, Facebook wants you to host your videos, your photography on their platform. They don't want you to share links to take people away. Um, so yes, your MLS listing link is important, included in there as well, but if you can add some photos in, to tease a video loaded to Facebook to tease your audience, uh, you know, hook them in, then take them to where they need to go for the rest of the information. That's important. And Facebook will, will reward you in the form of obviously organically uh, um, casting out your post to more of your audience. So uh, always think when posting to add some video and photos in mind, uh, when they live on Facebook, Facebook likes that because they don't want people to leave. So use that little tactic to uh, get some more audience engagement. Viewers retain, as I mentioned earlier, 95% more of the message when they watch a video compared to anything else. So uh, again, video, video, video. All right, guys, um, let me see what happened here in my full screen. There we go. Nice, that's what I wanted to see, boom. Okay, cool. Gear, 
guys, this is uh, this is fun. I got gadgets. I got all kinds of selfie sticks, and we've got tripods, and uh, there's a lot of different things that are going to help you up your game. I highly recommend a few of these as musts because um, they're just gonna they're just gonna give you a better. Uh, it's gonna be easier for you to take great photography. It's also gonna help you create quality photography, and you're not gonna get tired because you're holding a camera phone all day. Um, a tripod is awesome for you guys. These are some suggestions I have for you making our way around the horn. Uh, number one, a tripod, whether that is a, a desktop tripod there that's listed um, on the, uh, on the, in the screen or a, a telescoping one, which is similar to the one that I showed you guys here. It's kind of hard to see with me being green screened, but there are a lot of different models on the market. Um, with this particular one right here, this guy has these little claws that can bend and manipulate. Uh, I love this one, especially if you're in a backyard, you can use a fence post, wrap around a tree. Uh, you can level it out and get some great shots. Do more to make up uh, when you're composing your shots, get around the house, don't shoot from one location. And you know, when I say shoot photos, I'm not just talking about your listing of the home, but also for you guys. Um, whoop, let's see. Yeah, a good question here from Kyle. No hurry. <laughs> Is it possible to have Instagram and not Facebook? Yes, you can have just Instagram. You don't need to use Facebook. Facebook owns Instagram. So um, Facebook owns Instagram. So naturally, the two work well together. You can cross post, which is nice. I know a lot of people who don't use Facebook. A lot of millennials have left um, a lot of millennials have uh, abandoned Facebook and stuck just st strictly with Instagram just because of the user experience. Instagram has a lot of really cool tools uh, in addition to um, just their static feed. You've got your IGTV, you've got stories, you have reels now, which I'm doing next week on Thursday. Um, there's a lot of different things you can use to add to your marketing tool belt when it comes to getting uh, 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 in front of millennials, in front of an audience on Instagram. And, um, okay, so the easiest thing for you guys to do, and, and that's a good point, um, Luann and, and Mary Lee. Uh, so I have found a simple search on Amazon uh, it has yields you the best prices, obviously the reviews and um, uh, free shipping. So if you have Amazon Prime, I'm assuming, you know, not everyone does. I understand that. But um, I have found the best prices to be on Amazon and uh, the particular tripods. There's so many different brands. I don't have one. I don't have an affiliate link, so I'm not going to push anything on anybody. But when it comes to um, brands, making sure, A, that you're uh, the tripods will hold your phone. Since some of these iPhones and smartphones are very large now, the actual um, clamping mechanism right here needs to be, um, you know, one that will actually open up and hold your phone. So just doing a simple search um, on how, to, okay, on uh, any how-to links about the Instagram thing. Yeah, Kyle, tell you what, email, you guys have any questions Um Email me, I'm Keith, K-E-I-T-H, at westusa.com. And if there's something specific you'd like me to, to, that I've used, I will drop a link into you guys. I'd love to jump on calls if anyone has any time to chat. Um, and then um, uh, that way you guys can, I can get you guys more direct responses. Cool, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know there's a lot of techniques and tactics that I have found to be useful. And I save those in my, uh, in my uh, favorites and I go back to them to uh, enhance the quality of the videos that we do. Lighting is a big one, guys. Cannot stress enough consistency and lighting in your photography. Um, whether you're in a home that has electricity or one that does not, there are a couple different lighting kits that, uh, several different lighting kits that are battery operated that you charge those up before you go on site. Or if you have access to electricity, you can plug them in. Um, whether it's a one, a one light, a dome light, or a, a ring light is a popular one, especially for you influencers. Uh, ring lights can be easily picked up and taken somewhere else. Um, but the lighting is packages are also uh, very inexpensive, you know, 60, 70 bucks at the most. I think I've seen some decent ones on Amazon. Lighting is going to be huge for you guys. 
because that allows you to obviously light the room, light your subject, whether it's you or if it's a, a recently remodeled piece of uh, furniture, or not furniture, uh, uh, kitchen or the living room. Uh, lighting can help you fill in some of those shades, some of those dark areas that, uh, that could use a little love. Uh, when it comes to uh, video, microphone is important. Lavalier mics certainly uh, would um, um, uh, encourage you to guys get a microphone for your your um, your smartphone. Sorry, I had a moment there. Um, believe it or not, your earbuds or even a wired one that comes with your device. Well, not everyone's coming with them now, but what they did, uh, you have that built-in mic can work as a, as a workaround for now if you were to purchase one of these microphones off of Amazon. They allow you to cut out some of that noise in the background. Maybe you're near a, a road, a, there are a few or a roadway that's gonna cause a little noise. Uh, that'll cut that ambient sound out, sound out and allow you guys to have some really good audio. Um, the next one there is the gimbal. That is a floating gimbal. That is a, a motorized mechanism there. It has an X and a Y axis. It allows you to, like a selfie stick, hold the camera up, whether pointed at you or away, and it floats. It actually has two little motors there uh, on each of their points, and it keeps your camera uh, nice and, and float, that very cinematic feel. Great device to have if you're doing um, walk and talks uh, through an open house. If this were an item that you um, were to purchase, I, my wife just bought one, well, it's a couple of years now, but she bought one for her work. I have one. I paid $169 uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, she paid 79 So they've come down in price considerably. Uh, there are some, and, and the market is very competitive now. So that's brought the price down to everybody else. Um, one of my favorite tools, you definitely need to work on uh, getting used to it. Like everything, what you put into it is what you'll get out of it. But I just simply spent time walking through my house, going down the hallway, uh, pivoting around the kitchen, you know, coming back in through the playroom. Get comfortable with these devices. Uh, at your home, use your home as a great practicing uh, place. And then when you're out there and about, uh, you guys can really dial in your skills. The gimbal is an awesome tool to have. Uh, highly recommend that. It can also set onto a tripod here at the bottom. These gimbals all have a, a, a threaded bottom base that can lock onto a tripod. And then you can set it down and uh, get the same use of it as a traditional tripod. Last one there, guys, I, I'm going to recommend for you guys when we get into to staging and photography is a wide angle lens. There are so many of these on the market. It just really depends on what your price range is, the reviews, always go off the reviews, verified reviews is a big plus for me on Amazon and um, the ones that work with your particular smartphone in, in question, whether you're using an iPhone or a, smart, uh, you know, a Google uh, phone, a Google Pixel, Samsung, so many different models. So there's obviously an accompanying lens, but these wide angle lenses are going to allow you to get more of the room in the shot. After all, people are buying square footage. So they want to see the floor. They want to see at least two to three walls in a shot. Uh, as I mentioned here in the tips moving forward. And this guy over here in the corner, that's a, that's a little more of a pro user. They've got a lighting package and a, uh, a microphone on there, a little um, mic to cut down on uh, Let's get to the next slide. Cut down on noise. All right, so understanding your settings on your phone. Mastering your iPhone uh, basics is important. I'm going to say that most of you guys are power users, power users when it comes to uh, using your flash. <laughs> um, but, you know, knowing how to turn off and on your flash, uh, you know, zooming in and out through so usually pinching with your fingers, uh, adjusting for low light situations. So, uh, it's important you guys familiarize yourself with how your lighting works. Uh, there is a there is a, um, a auto focus and an auto exposure, the AEAF. Uh, when you tap on an actual subject on their phone, uh, all smartphones cameras should have a, uh, a, a, a AEAF lock. So if you you could even take your phone out now, uh, turn your camera on, and face your camera towards you. And just tap on your face and hold it for a second, and you should see a little thing pop up that says AEAF lock. That is locking on the particular part of the photo and where you chose. And then uh, your auto exposure and your autofocus won't change. It'll lock in on that device, on that particular subject. 
And that helps with lighting issues and focusing and getting that crisp shot. Uh, highly recommend using a tripod when you're gonna do this for shooting a room. And it, you can also adjust the, the exposure if you've got um, some bright whites coming through the window or uh, some dark corners. Uh, if, you're, if the subject is not well lit, you can tap on it and cheat by uh, opening your exposure up a little bit and getting a better photo. Um, so obviously adjusting in low light situations and then capture your images in HDR mode. It's high dynamic range. Uh, going into your settings here on the right hand side, you guys can change out uh, in your camera settings, uh, obviously tap on general, uh, go to settings, general, and then from there, uh, go into the camera. You guys can access your settings. And a few things to look at when you're shooting, uh, having HDMI, HDR on, which is high dynamic range, what that does is it's taking a photo at low light, mid light, and high light, and then combining them together to get the best photo. Um, I have this set all the time because, uh, you know, if you're moving it about or some of your subject line, subject is in sun, some of it's in the shade, your camera will work that out for you through its processor, which is really nice. Um, when recording video, you guys have some settings here to choose from. Understanding your frame rate, that's how many frames per second your camera is shooting video. Uh, the customary standard is 1080p at 30 frames per second. That's just a natural shot there. Uh, it has more of like a movie feel uh, than it does maybe like a, a full 4K uh, um, uh, video you would see on YouTube. It just really depends on how you want to shoot uh, in the look. Testing these, uh, set your settings, shoot a video, pan, whatever, go back, watch the video, go back and change your settings to the next one, shoot a video again, same exact shot, and then you can see those side by side to familiarize yourself with what 60 frames a second looks like compared to 30. But in your settings, uh, recording video, making sure that you, at least 1080p, uh, a lot of these cameras now are shooting 4K. Highly recommend at least 1080. Uh, it won't eat up a lot of your memory, uh, but you'll still get really nice, clean shots. And especially if you're um, um, having any video chats or uh, shooting video of your, uh, your home. Um, going through there, scan, uh, you've got your QR code. That's not anything to do with what we're talking about. <clears throat> See where it says grid under composition? composition? Your grid's important. When you turn your grid on, those are your, uh, your, your thirds. It looks just like you've got on the phone, you've got grids that run here. These are great to use as guides for when you guys are shooting in a room. You can keep your angles really straight and you get a nice level shot. You don't get any distortion when your camera's either tilted, uh, leaning forward or back or side to side. You can use that to help guide and get really nice symmetrical shots of a room. So if you don't have your grid turned on, I highly recommend it. Um, it's not, eventually you just don't even see it anymore, um, but my grid's always on so that I have a better idea of the photography and, and getting nice great shots. Um, that's about it on the last one, the last settings there. I'm trying to hide myself. <laughs> Let me move over a little bit. All right, yeah, we're, uh, yeah. And then having obviously those things turned on, um, Acclimate yourself with those guys. And I know you can always go to uh, Apple. If you have an iPhone, uh, go to your apple.com um, forward slash photography, I believe it is, or just do a search for it. They have some great tips on how to use uh, not only Apple devices, but specifically which phone it is you're using and getting good shots. All right, so prepping. This is a big one, you guys. Uh, you know, believe it or not, Prepping has a lot to do with the way your photography is going to turn is going to turn out, and so I did put some prepping tips together for you guys. Assuming many of you may know this, many of you may not, but those are just a lot of things that you're going to be responsible for when you go to take photos, as opposed to when hiring a photographer, which a good photographer usually takes care of a lot of these little things for you as well. But um, decluttering your surface from the decor uh, from your decor collection. If you've got any accent walls or anything displayed, you know, uh, knickknacks from, from you've saved or heirlooms, uh, you know, your old high school baseball trophies, anything like that. Uh, we want to declutter and depersonalize a lot of the home before we uh, shoot. Uh, it's important to get a clean a lot of things and, and get things uh, situated so that 
we have a really nice minimalistic shot. Uh, remove solid pieces of furniture that could free up the flow of the room. Uh, you know, start large and uh, make sure you, everything's staged that respect. And then if you've got a, a footstool or a little obscure table, open those up so it shows more square footage and more space along the walls so that you get a more uh, dynamic look of the room. Making the floor seem larger, get rid of those area rugs, pull those up uh, as long as they're not carrying or covering, you know, any crime scenes. Um, just kidding. Uh, you know, remove those floors, those floor uh, runners, anything that may um, make the room feel small, get those up off the floor. So you, you, again, we're selling uh, floor. And so we want to see uh, how grand the rooms are. Making the floor seem larger by removing the rugs and then letting more natural light in. Uh, do your best if there are, if there are, if there is natural light, if there's some great windows, um, open those up. If you need to, you can diffuse the light if it's super bright by using some nice sheer uh, blinds, crime scenes, yeah. <laughs> um, make sure it's in the disclosure. Uh, <laughs> and then remove extra stuff from the kitchen counter. This is a big one, guys. A lot of appliances. Um, I love to cook, so I'm always trying to buy the next gadget, the nice, next nice, cool thing, you know, the air fryer, the, 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 the Instapot. Uh, all those need to be put away. Let's get those off the counter, especially if you've got a beautiful black backsplash. We want to see that. Uh, again, very minimalistic. Keep it clean. Um, uh, you know, homeowners don't want to be reminded of what you have. They want to be able to envision what the house will look like when they own it and what they can put there. So getting things off the counter, anything that's gonna turn them off is a bit, would be a big, big plus for you guys as well. Uh, let me get to my next slide. All right, so bathroom, move it over to the bathroom. Close the toilet seat, number one. <laughs> um, toilet seat, make sure that guy's closed when we're gonna shoot the, the uh, bathroom. Clean off the surfaces, obviously the counter, uh, you know, any extra soap, soap bottles, toothbrushes, um, anything that's gonna, remind the viewer that someone is actually occupying the home if you've got, if you've got some great uh, soap bottles that's fine but you know any any used stuff a half a half a bottle of uh, you know dove or dials you, you know get those off there let's clean those up and remove them from the counter uh open the shower curtain especially if there's any lighting um in the shower if you've got some you know those uh, those glass cubed walls or if there's a nice light uh, open the shower curtain, and we want to show the shower head. That's a big one. Um, if, if the light's good and it works for you, want to open that shower up to show that shower creates depth in the room, and obviously will get you a nice lit shot as well. Oh, and then number one, if I haven't said it already, make sure to close the toilet seat. <laughs> That's a big one, guys. All right, bedroom, last one here for you. Uh, no cords, uh, you know, phone chargers, um, you know, uh, 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 Alarm clock, uh, cords from the from the lamp, you know, unplug those, wrap them, stuff them behind there. Um, we want to hide the cords the best that we can. It really does make a difference. I know, guys, these might seem like little things, but when staging a home, um, it's important because it makes it look clean and professional, uh, professionally shot. Um, straighten the sheets out on the bed. That's a big one. You may even need to go get some different sheets if you've got an unruly sheet. Uh, I know that um, you know making sure you have clean, crisp sheets and everything straightened out, clean lines, no wrinkles will be a big one for you as well. Um, would model homes help to see a house could be staged? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you, you guys have uh, access to new builds, you know, and, and a little tip for you guys too. I, I, I learned this one from an agent a couple of years back, uh, a few years back now. Um, if you've got some time on your hands and maybe you need some marketing shots, Grab yourself a tripod, grab, whoop, grab yourself a tripod, grab the camera, uh, your camera, and go into a model home on an off day, a slow day. Um, you know, just let know you're an agent. You're just kind of looking at some floor plans or whatever. And uh, then go into the home and take some stage shots. I knocked over my water, sorry. Uh, take some stage shots uh, with you in the kitchen or, you know, uh, sitting at a, at a breakfast bar or, uh, you know, um, in the living room, um, and then use those for your, for your marketing needs, uh, but also to get some tips from those stage homes. Um, that way you can, um, um, take those and transfer them into when you're staging a house 
and running around getting it prepped because a lot of times you're on your own. So, you know, you're doing, like I said, multiple hats, you're doing all this stuff for you. So yeah, going to a new home build. Uh, I've got a couple agents who will take a colleague in or a family member, or they'll bring like, you know, mom and dad, and they'll go through and tour a home. Uh, and then they'll do some stage shots where they look like the agent who's doing an open house or in the middle of a conversation, you know, that those candid shots. And then use those in your marketing materials, guys. Uh, use those for your social media creation. Use those for content creation. You know, during some slow times, you guys can still give the perception that you're, you're, you're you know, you're working, you're out meeting with clients. Um, and then obviously share your knowledge because um, uh, they don't have to know that you don't have a listing right now, but you can still give the perception that you're working and, and out there being an agent, which is a great tool for you guys there. Fluff the pillows, play, play, place those pillows in place. If you don't have any, uh, maybe, you know, grow, uh, grow to into the thrift stores, dollar stores, um, you know, TJ Maxx. Grab yourself some inexpensive pillows, you know, a little bit, little investment, help your client get that house sold, stage it properly, some great photos, uh, throw those on there. Obviously, make sure they don't clash with the decor, but uh, those are some tools for you there for when it comes to getting ready to shoot. All right. Yeah, definitely flush the toilet, Kyle. I would, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, that lid's closed. <laughs> you, you can leave whatever's in there, right? All right. So camera tips. When you guys have your smartphone, um, uh, camera height is important. I know naturally you're good. You would think to shoot at eye level, but when we shoot at eye level, typically what happens is a lot of the ceiling ends up being in the photo and we're not buying ceiling. We're buying floor space, right? So we want to level that camera down, bring it down to our waist. I know it may seem, um, uh, foreign to you to do that, but, um, if you bring it down to your waist, you're going to get more of the floor space in. And you're going to show more of the room, uh, the, the more, more of what the client is buying, and that's the square footage. So it's important to get more of the floor in than the ceiling, unless the ceiling has a feature like a grand chandelier or a beautiful 72-inch ceiling fan or something really cool. But that would be considered a subject shot. And that would be something that you would center in the camera uh, and highlight uh, in some of your more specifics. When we're doing room shots, we want to back up. We want to go lower. I'd say waist to chest at most and get a nice shot of the room with the floor in there as well. Your, your camera angle is a big one. Remember I told you guys about the grids. When you turn your grids on, it's going to help you with your camera angles because you'll be able to line up and get a very symmetrical shot. We don't want to tip the camera forward. I, know, I see a lot of this, a lot of these shots from up above. That's great if you're taking a photo of yourself because that is a trick to make yourself look a little thinner. I know I do that a lot with my selfies. Um, but when it comes to your photography, uh, we want to keep that camera level so that you don't distort the photo. So horizontal, and we want to keep it nice and flat. If we get forward like this, it starts to distort and augment the lines and you just get a real weird look and you can't get a good feel for how the room flows. Um, this will keep your lines clean and really help you out a lot. Also too, do your best when you're shooting a room, try to get more than one wall in the shot. Uh, if you're just gonna take a shot of a single wall and all we're seeing is one wall, that really doesn't create a lot of depth. Um, if you can get more of an angle, get two walls in, if you can get it right and get three walls in, like in this particular kitchen shot here, that's going to give you the best um, understanding of how grand or not so grand the space is in your shots. And uh, it gives more information to your viewer, to the, someone who's looking at the photos. And I think this is a big plus for you guys if you can get this shot. Um, uh, a big thing also too is lighting, and consistency in lighting. So obviously making sure your lighting is consistent throughout the room. You have access to lighting, accent lighting, the uh, uh, wall sconces, anything like that, teardrop lights, lights hanging from there, uh, pot lights up, everything is on and then you can get an idea of um, what's all lit. Big one I see here a lot too, guys, is different kinds of bulbs. I know, uh, it just looks terrible when you've got a CFL with an LED or you've got a traditional bulb that's a warm white with a cool white. Uh, it just, it looks real janky. And so um, 
um, if, if, the, if the home is this quality, I would definitely recommend getting those bulbs all uniformed so you have a nice consistent look throughout the house. As you guys know, different lights can bring out different features of a, an accent wall, of a backsplash and so on. Undermount lighting, if it's, they have it, turn that on. Um, that way we can get a really grand shot of what we're shooting. Hope that helps for you guys because I know my wife made me go through the <laughs> BYOB, bring your own bulbs. <laughs> it's awesome, man. That's so great. Yeah, BYOB, have a nice big a box of bulbs in the back of the trunk. <laughs> um, yeah, and just don't drive over any potholes. Um, yeah, lighting is big. I went through the whole house one time and uh, and replaced uh, all the lights because the, the previous homeowner, when we first got in there, they just had everything you can think of um, in the way of uh, lights. Uh, so it's, uh, it's crazy. All right. So when it comes to, you guys have any questions about any of that content on angles and shooting? Hopefully that was some value for you there. Um, I'll move on to editing your photos. There's three popular apps right now that you guys can use to edit your photos. Um, like again, to, you know, downloading these, uh, there, some may have some pro options that have a cost associated, but these guys have done a really good job of keeping the cost you know, at a yearly rate, you know, there's a price break if you sign up for an annual or if you go month to month, there'll be a few bucks more. But these are some of the three most popular ones that um, that that I have used and, and I hear a lot of good things from when it comes to uh, just getting apps going when you're using um, an editing on your phone. Now, uh, for you power users, uh, I couldn't I couldn't not uh, point out that if you are looking for some more advanced tools, uh, Adobe is amazing. Adobe Photoshop, Adobe has uh, a, a couple different offerings for you guys. Uh, Photoshop Express Photo Editor um, is free. Uh, they are, they, you can use quite a bit of their tools at no cost. And then they have some pro plans to unlock. Now these, um, full disclosure there, just let me move myself out of the way so you guys can read that one. Uh, full disclosure, um, the, uh, these, they do have some powerful tools, but may require some additional training, um, you know, a lot of tutorials online for you guys in this respect. Adobe Lightroom, super cool. There's a lot of presets in there. Uh, I don't recommend when it comes to lighting or when it comes to apps, when I say editing, uh, I'm not talking about, you know, dropping those filters that you would see on Instagram over your photos. We don't want to distort your photography too far away from what the actual home looks like. Uh, it's important not to, to augment that or change that too much because um, it's not what we're buying. So when I say uh, editing, some of the big ones you're looking for is lighting, um, you know, killing shadows, uh, uh, bumping up the lighting where those dark spots are, and just giving a nice overall finished look. What's really cool about uh, these apps is they kind of have like a preset auto mode. So uh, a lot of the apps have artificial intelligence built into them and they're able to scan the photo. And then based on certain uh, key point elements throughout the photo, the photo, their AI will make adjustments it sees accordingly. And if you, can, if you think that looks good and it gets by by just doing that, then by all means, I think that's great. I know a lot of agents who uh, have a set app that they love. Uh, they dump all their photos in and then the app just goes through and do, 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 just does a full process of all the photos, kicks them out as finished, and then they're off and running for uh, their next uh, their next shoot. So I wanted to point out those apps for you guys. I think those are really cool to use uh, and should get you guys um, a, a lot of great results. Probably certainly better than what you've currently been using. So um, all right, so real quick, I want to jump into video. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it since I do have a video class, but I just wanted to emphasize for you guys, if you're not already doing so, um, going live is a, is a really cool way to encourage engagement from your audience. Uh, if you have access to an open house or to the home and you're able to go live, go live. Facebook will, will kick that out. Instagram will kick that out and to your audience. And you guys can do a really cool, 15, 20 second, 30, 30 second teaser of a home. Um, encourage people to ask questions in a, in a live chat. You'll see who's jumping in and watching. You can greet them as they come in. You can, you're literally having a conversation with people uh, and you're able to, and especially 
the reason why I keep live, I keep talking about live is, um, is a great way for you guys to get some exposure and engagement with your audience and not have to be in the same room with them, being mindful of the current climate that we're in with COVID cases and people, uh, you know, not comfortable having people in their house. There's two really cool options for you when it comes to doing a live, uh, either Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, even there's everyone that goes live. You can go live on LinkedIn now. So wherever you want to go live, <coughs> you guys can apply these two tactics. Okay. Number one, for you guys, the traditional walkthrough. Uh, you've got a tripod or you have your gimbal and we're doing a walk and talk. Uh, flip that camera around, show us the backsplash, show us the backyard remodeled, whatever it is you wanna highlight, highlight and use your voice to narrate uh, for you apprehensive folk who don't like to be on video. You don't have to be, um, but you can show us what we're looking at and then just talk to us. Uh, as if you were walking alongside, uh, you know, someone who was looking at the home and you can take your audience into the house and narrate what they're seeing, which is a really cool basic technique and one that uh, everyone feels safe about because they're doing it from the comfort of their home and your home seller doesn't have to have everyone coming through the house. We had a house down the street, three doors down, had an open house, must have been 25, 30 people outside in line. It was insane. I go, I know you guys know this. I know you hear about it, but I saw it firsthand. Couldn't believe it. And uh, I just thought I'm going to have to go through with some Lysol and spend the rest of the day cleaning my house. Uh, second option for you guys there on going live. And I think this is a really cool one. Uh, go shoot all those photos. Now that you're going to be an amazing photographer with your iPhone, go shoot all those shots Put them into a folder on your desktop or your on your onto your um, your home computer. Go live and share your screen. Uh, share your screen like I am here, and then open that folder up. Take us through the photos and tell us what we're looking at. Um, you could share your screen on your device and uh, you know narrate what we're looking at. You can um, obviously use slideshows if you've got a, if you've shot a video whatever uh, form of media you're using. I really think this is a really cool technique that you can do. And, um, you know, answer questions as people jump into the chat box. Hey, where are you guys? Well, hey, Keith, good to see you. Uh, you know, where do you live now? Are you out of state or in the state? Uh, or if you know them, ask them something, a past history, engage them in conversation. You guys are just furthering your relationship with them. I think that's awesome. And you're using live to do that from the comfort of your own home. So uh, some tactics for you guys, when it comes to doing your video, obviously get human with them. Uh, uh, there's a lot of obviously stress and anxiety right now. So sharing how you're getting through this tough time, uh, asking them how they're doing is important. And then really just uh, showing your overall appreciation for them being on a live chat with you. Um, <clears throat> be a connector when it comes to live. Um, you know, as an agent, you guys are working with nonprofits, you should be working with nonprofits to do food drives, water drives, back to school drives. Being a connector in the community, I think is a great tool for you guys when it comes to live video. Um, get with the program director, get with the teacher. What can you, you know, do a Zoom with them, record the Zoom, and then share that as content on your social media. I think that's a great tool right there to do. Uh, it's fast, it's quick, it's non-intrusive, so you don't have to be on campus or you don't have to be in the store, again, if you wanna be mindful of our current situation. What local businesses can you help out? Uh, revised menus, hours of operation, You know, partner with a small mom and pop pizzeria, get a coupon code, uh, You know, add those into a gift, a closing gift gift cards. You know, I'm a big local first person. So I believe that, you know, if you can do whatever you can to drive, we always like to, you know, eat local, shop local when we can, grab some gift cards from a, you know, a bakery and add that in on a closing gift. Um, and, but, you know, get to know that business owner so that they can pass around your information word of mouth. Again, being memorable for everybody that you meet in your life is important because they'll remember you the next time they have a need or they know someone who does. Uh, nonprofits are a big one for you guys. Last one there for video ideas for you guys. Get with team members, your vendors, anybody who supports you and your business, get them on camera with you. Uh, ask them what, what it is, how, how do they service your client? What are three things that your client needs to know that about the home buying and selling process? Um, get your loan officer to talk about getting your credit better. Uh, what, what's the first thing I should do? You know, uh, Pay down the debt. 
uh, um, snowball that money into the next payment. Um, you know, those three, those, you know, your loan officers talk about this all the time, get them on camera and then just have a conversation with them. Again, use Zoom, fantastic tool there. Uh, and, uh, and then share your video as a check in with my local person, uh, what's hot, what's not in the market, influencing in videos. So uh, interview anybody, the HOA board members, what are some community concerns they have right now? Um, you know, do a spotlight piece with, uh, if you can get, you know, any one of our first responders, always awesome to give them a little love and let your folks know where's the nearest fire station uh home improvement get a contractor on with you what's one thing you can do to increase the home value of your home each and every year again you guys can still continue to provide value to your client after the fact and it keeps them watching your content and it keeps you top of mind with them the next time they have a need everyone hates that story about oh i just refer to someone I couldn't remember who you were or I couldn't remember your name I didn't have your card anymore we hear that all the time and so these are great ways you guys can keep being in uh, their thoughts when they're watching your content market statistics is another big one guys um, definitely market stats for your area for your neighborhoods a few more tips for you guys there just gonna run through those real quick uh, you know three tips five tips seven tips to do or not to do something um uh we talked about pre-approval are they ready to be pre-approved you better be pre-approved before you want to go shop around here's where you go to do that uh behind the scenes you guys always have some cool things happening uh any video you can do that educates your audience what is a binzer what should i ask for in a binzer take my top three don't go for all 15. how long do they have to respond uh what can i expect those are all great video content ideas for you guys. Ones and, and again, you guys are creating an archive and a library of these things. So people are not only getting to know you, seeing that you're a qualified real estate agent, an expert, but um, they're getting to know you while watching these videos. And there's a likability factor there. I like this guy, he comes across, or girl, comes across awesome on camera, so knowledgeable. When we finally get together, I'm going to feel great about working with them. And I think this is an awesome opportunity for you guys. And, you know, what to expect at closing. About me video. You guys do an intro every, I say every once a month, maybe once a quarter at the least. It, reintroduce yourself to your audience. Uh, hey, guys, wanted to reintroduce myself. I've got some new followers since I last did this. Um, you know, who you are, what you do, why you do it, where you do it, uh, what motivates you what's a hidden talent that you have, uh, you know, stupid human trick, whatever the case may be. Every quarter, try to reintroduce yourself to your social media followers, guys. It's important. We, you're going to change. You're going to get a haircut. We're going to get our beard shaved. We're going to get a new shirt. You know, we're going to do something fun. Uh, we're always changing. So stay current, stay current and up to date with your audience members. Last one there for you guys. Just some additional editing tools for your apps for or for apps for your videos. Um, read the reviews. Uh, do some research for yourself on this one. But these are some popular ones. As you can see there, Adobe in the left-hand corner has one called Adobe Rush. If you guys subscribe to their monthly service, I think it's like 16 to 20 bucks a month. And you get all their apps, which is really cool. Uh, iMovie comes with iPhone. Uh, there's a number of uh, apps there for you guys when it comes to editing video. Uh, hopefully you guys will find one that works best for you and run with it because when you do and you, you like it, uh, stick with it until you find out what the, the new shiny toy is and then move on to the next one. So, um, oh, I had a, no, where's my slide? I had a slide. Tomorrow, okay, so uh, that's it. That's what I got for today. Next week, guys, we're doing um, maximize your social media presence with reels, Instagram reels. All we're doing, get into Instagram and we're gonna do reels. We're gonna talk about using that particular tool. And the reason why I'm doing that is right now, uh, reels is uh, the, uh, the best way right now on Instagram for you guys to increase your audience and engagement. Um, uh, Instagram has turned the dial up on that specific uh, tool, that uh, fun editing tool they have called Reels. Um, when they dial the, the, the turn the dial up, that's usually when everyone's going to benefit. They're, they want to really push that particular piece of their offering. And when they do, everyone benefits. I'm trying to do more Reels. 
because I want to grow my audience base. I'm close to a thousand followers, just trying to get over that thousand month. So if you're not already following me, I'd love for you guys to jump on to social media. Here's what my handles are. I'd love to follow you back, see the content you're putting out, engage you in a conversation. Um, and then as always, if you have any questions, email me. I'm Keith, K-E-I-T-H at WestUSA.com. Happy to pick the phone up and have a conversation with you and learn more about you and your needs uh, here at the brokerage. Uh, that's it. Unless you guys got anything for me, the chat box looks pretty good. Penny, you're most welcome. Excited you were able to join us. Um, you too, Fran. Thank you, Marie Lee. You guys uh, have a great day. Be kind to one another. Be safe. We will see you next Thursday. Take care.